Hey guys, Kimmy here. In today's video, we're talking about the best and some of the worst of 21 Days of Beauty, and we're gonna hit on buyer's remorse. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Kimmy. This is my attic, and today we are talking about 21 Days of Beauty. The best and some of the worst of 21 Days of Beauty. Of course, Ulta's sale. I will let you guys know what I got. I actually have a category that I am adding. Um, the best, the worst, and just plain buyer's remorse. But before I get into that, I just want to kind of say something. I feel it's worth saying. Is it a lecture? Maybe a little bit. And I would, if it was a lecture, if it was a class, I would call it, don't get caught up in it. So if you're interested in hearing that, I'm going to do that right now. If not, I'm going to put a timestamp right here of when I actually start talking about the products that I got so that you can fast forward. If you don't hear, feel like getting a lecture from me. But it's not really a lecture because I'm speaking from experience. Now I know this might seem a little hypocritical because I'm about to show you the box of stuff that I ordered from Ulta from 21 Days of Beauty and then I'm going to tell you not to get caught up in stuff like this. But my friends, I am speaking from experience. I'm speaking from experience. So let me just give you a quick, a quick thing, like a quick story. When I first got into makeup a couple years ago, I had no idea what the hell Ulta 21 Days of Beauty is. Let me, let me start there. Because I remember when I used to watch YouTube videos, when I first started watching YouTube videos, you know, every once in a while I would hit on something and people would start talking and then they would say, well, for anybody that doesn't know, let me just say, I was always one of those people that didn't know. So every year, it's, it's around Labor Day into the fall, and I believe they have it again in the spring, Ulta holds their 21 days of beauty sale. And it, it is exactly what it sounds like. It is 21 days, and they put different things on sale every day for 21 days. But if there's something specific that you want, you have to make sure that you get the day. So if, let's say Kylie's lipsticks are on sale, because that's always the, it's always the same stuff. I'll get there. Let's say you want Kylie's lipstick. That's on sale day two. So you have to buy it on day two because it's not gonna be on sale day one and it's not gonna be on sale day three. Day one will be other things. Day three will be other things. Every day it's something different. And these things are on sale for one day. And I think that in itself can cause pressure for people to feel like they need to buy something. If they don't buy this today, you know, they can't get it tomorrow, they'll have to pay full price. But let me just take you a step back. When I first got into makeup, I first heard of Ulta's 21 Days of Beauty because on YouTube, people start talking about it long before it happens. Like it's this big, big thing, right? And of course, you know, it is fun. Um, it's not, it, I'll get there, okay. So I was like really, really excited about it. And every then it happened, and every single day, you would get like updates, you know, this is what's on sale today, this is what you should get, this is, the, this is like what you should get today, this is what you should, I ended up buying something every single day. For 21 days, I was so overtaken by this, okay? And I felt like this is a good deal. Yeah, I never heard of this product, so what? It's, it's half off, and, and so-and-so is saying that it's great, and, and, and it's all, you know, everywhere I look on YouTube, it's 21 days of beauty, 21 days of beauty. I have to have this. So I bought something every single day, spent way too much money, and the only thing I can tell you that I remember buying was the Murad Dewey Lotion, Dewey Face Lotion. I thought that was very good. It's a very nice product. I can't tell you one other thing I got. I don't remember any of it. I don't think I liked any of it. I like that one thing. Fast forward, the next time they did 21 Days of Beauty, you can imagine my shock when so many of the products were exactly the same as they had been the previous 21 Days of Beauty. They change it up a little, but the more you watch and the more you get into it and the more you get into makeup and start to become familiar with these sales, you kind of realize that it's usually the same stuff. It's stuff by Kylie, it's stuff by Lancome, there's always a lot of random skin products, a lot of random lip products, um, those cover effects blushes, the bronzers. There's stuff that is just guaranteed to be there every single time. MAC lipsticks, every single time you will see the same stuff. And then there is some new things. So, 
here's how I feel about 21 days of, and I've never done it since that first time. I never did it. I never felt the need to do it. This year I did purchase some stuff. This is the first year I've ever had a YouTube channel and I figured, why not? Um, I'll give it another chance and we'll see what happens. But since then, like the time in between, I never got involved with 21 Days of Beauty again. I just didn't feel it was worth it. Here's the thing, here's who 21 Days of Beauty is really good for. Or here's some scenarios where 21 Days of Beauty really works out. If there's a product that you wanted, that you really wanted, or that you know you like, and you can get it on sale, that's a win for you. If there's a product that you wanted to try, legitimately wanted to try, and you can get it on sale, that's a win for you. If there's a product that you really don't want or need, but you feel pressure into buying because it's 50% off, that's probably gonna be a loss. It probably is. And how many of us do it every one of these sales? Probably a lot of us. So. My point is that when you watch YouTube and you watch beauty YouTubers like I do, I think it's very, very easy to get caught up in things like this. And it's not just 21 Days of Beauty. 21 Days of Beauty is done. What the hell is that? Nobody's even, it's like it didn't even exist anymore. Now everything is holiday makeup. 2021, holiday makeup. Let me see, because sometimes I don't know. Okay, it's September 25th. So you might be thinking, but I just spent all my, my money at 21 Days of Beauty and now everybody's saying I need holiday makeup. Well, you've got time, okay? It really is only September. You do have time. I know this video will be going up a couple days after, but I'm filming it on September 25th. Also, holiday makeup is the same thing. You've seen it before. You saw it last year. I guarantee you, it's fun. I'm gonna look at it. Of course, I'm gonna pick some stuff up, but do I expect to see anything really, truly different than what I saw last year? No. I already saw one thing, and that was the Tarte blush sets. I think Tarte did blush holiday set last year, and they probably did it the year before. It's a little different. It's a little different. But what I'm saying is, don't feel pressure. Don't spend money that you don't have because you feel pressure to partake in 21 Days of Beauty, or partake in the holiday 2021, or partake in so the Sephora sale, okay? Don't go there. When you want something, you get it, you know, if you can. But don't feel the need to buy stuff that you don't want and you don't need, and sometimes you can't afford. That's all I'm saying. It's just very, very easy to get caught up in it. You know it, I know it, I have been there, I have been there so many times when I have purchased something that I don't even want because I saw something on YouTube or, or this or that. And, you know, it's just, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. And I think there's too much. Ulta 21 Days of Beauty is great. It's a sale. Sale is always awesome. But I just think there's too much made of it. That's my opinion. I would love to know your guys' opinion. With that, let's get into it. Yes, I have the box. Let's go. All right, guys, so I said I was going to add a category. I actually have two added categories. I have the best, the worst, buyer's remorse, and not 21 days of beauty. <laughs> because I have a couple things here that were not 21 days of beauty, and those were the Ulta candles. So I bought three of them. Three of these Ulta candles, I happened to be on the Ulta website for 21 Days of Beauty, and I believe they were like $10, and I thought that was a really good deal, so I got it. Do I need another candle? No. But I remember in the past liking Ulta candles, so this one is Pumpkin Spice. It's really, they're not that great, to be honest with you. Like, if I could, I'll burn them because they're candles, whatever, they're okay. But I wouldn't, I have this one is sparkling leaves. I definitely would not pick, this one smells like soap. Like how is this, I don't know. I wouldn't pick these up. Honestly, I, I think Bath and Body does have the best candles. I'm standing by that. I think they do. Um, crisp Apple. I'm going to be doing a video, a Bath and Body video soon. I'll tell you my stance on Bath and Body. <laughs> but as far as candles, I, I think they, they are the best. This does not smell like apples. These two smell exactly the same, the leaves and the apple, and this one, 
pumpkin spice. This one's probably the best. This one has a little bit of a pumpkin smell or what we as humans <laughs> think pumpkin smell like. You know what I mean. Um, but honestly, I think I would skip the candles. Whether they're $10 or $2 from Ulta, I, to me, they're just not that great. Ulta has, used to, I used to really like their body lotions. I thought they were nice. I think their bubble bath is spectacular. I think their body wash is not that great. So with Ulta, like these kind of products from Ulta, I think it's totally hit or miss. So I would skip the candle. Now last Christmas, last Christmas I remember purchasing candles at Ulta and I think they were really good. I think I like them, but I don't know these. I don't know what happened with these. Maybe it's just the fall scents. I don't know, I don't like these at all. I would skip, I would skip the fall candles from Ulta this year and just bypass because they're not, to me, they're not that good. Okay, so that was nothing to do with 21 Days of Beauty, but they did come from Ulta. So my three categories are the best, things that I purchased that I really wanted to try. And I have one thing that I did purchase because I saw it and it was on sale. So, but I think it worked out, so I also put that in the best category. Then I have the worst category, but that category is not that big, it's only two things. Then I have buyer's remorse. These products aren't bad, but I'm probably not gonna use them. I didn't need them. I shouldn't have spent my money on them. And the only reason I bought them was because they were on sale. I never even heard of them. Well, most, no, one of them, I can't say that. One of them I never heard of. The other ones I heard of, but I had no uh, plan to buy it. So I'll go ahead and I'll start with the worst category. Now, I did look at the reviews of this product and they were very, very good. So it could be me, it could be my dry skin, but this is the Hey Honey Trick and Treat Corrective Cream. Active moisturizing cream with honey. Color correcting formula with treatment benefits. So basically, this is, 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 a, color, is a correcting cream. It's a CC cream and you know, it's supposed to like even out your skin. It's also supposed to be very moisturizing and I believe it's supposed to like, oh yeah, trick. To enjoy complete and natural looking skin. <clears throat> Perfect coverage. Use it all under face and eyes and the treat is that you feel the benefits of an active moisturizing cream. And I believe it was supposed to like help with like wrinkles and everything else. <laughs> this caked up on me. To me, I mean, the way that they described it, it, it seemed like it would be good for dry skin. My skin is very, very dry. This, not only did it not color correct, um, it never sunk into my skin. And I could like see it, like just kind of sitting on the surface. And where it did sink in, it just kind of caked up. So maybe it's just not for dry skin, but this was a total loss for me. It was a double loss because not only did it not work for me, I didn't want it. I just bought it. I never even heard of it, but I saw it on 21 Days of Beauty, so I bought it and yeah, no good. Don't worst. One of the worst products. And the other well, the only other really worst product I have is this. This is the long <laughs> I'm going to get I know. I've heard a lot of people talk great things about this company Ofra. But every time I try something, I don't like it. And I have tried the highlighters. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. Like, that's like their standout product is their highlighters. I've tried the highlighters, and I thought they were okay. Again, it could be my skin. I have very dry skin. Highlighters are not an easy thing for me because when you have dry skin, you can see the texture. So, again, it could be that they might be made for more combination skin or people with just not has dry skin. But this is the long-lasting liquid lipstick. I have heard a bunch of YouTubers that I like talking this product up, that their lipsticks are really good. Um, I'm not a liquid lipstick fan to begin with, but I did want to try these again. I heard like some YouTubers that I follow saying that they were not drying, that they were moisturizing. Mm -mm, they're not. Um, I didn't care for this product. I didn't care for this formula. For me, this was the worst of my Ulta 21 Days of Beauty, these two products. But I would say, I think I liked this one a lot less than this one. It was okay. Like I said, I'm not like a liquid lipstick person. So it was probably not gonna work out for me anyway, but I didn't like that. I didn't like that product at all. Okay, now I'm gonna move into buyer's remorse. 
Now, these are products that are not bad and I kind of like them. I have no use for them and I'm probably never going to use them and I wouldn't have bought them if I had it, if they hadn't popped up on 21 Days of Beauty. And so they, for me, they were a waste. The first one is this. Now this is the one I was saying that I never heard of. This is Sand and Sky Dreamy Glow Drops. I don't need these. I have so many things. I have an entire drawer full of like glowy primers or glowing drops, uh, all kinds of stuff. I have the Glossier, I have Milani, I have a bunch of other ones I can't even think off the top of my head. The last thing I needed was another one from a brand I never heard of. Are these terrible? No. Are they, do they work? They're fine. They work pretty much the same as the other ones that I have. They're lovely, they're fine. The Milani ones work really nice. The Glossier ones work really nice. I have a lot of those. Do I need this? No. Why did I buy it? Because it was on sale. Am I gonna use it? Probably not, because I have other ones that I like. So, I'll end up giving it to someone. Buyer's remorse, number one. Buyer's remorse, number two. This moisturizer by Alicia Keys. This is her, um, her brand, Keys. This is the Skin Transformation Cream. Is there anything wrong with this product? The only thing that, for me, personally, I don't think this is moisturizing enough for my skin, but you can't go by my skin. My skin is excessively dry. For the, basically, I think this is a good product. It doesn't, it's not something that I'm probably gonna use again. I have a lot of moisturizers that work better for me, but there's nothing wrong with this product. Would I have bought this product if it wasn't for 21 Days of Beauty and I was intrigued by it? No. So buyer's remorse. And then buyer's remorse also, two lipsticks. If you could see my lipstick drawer, you would know that the last thing I need is two lipsticks by Buxom. I have Full Force, is that with Heartthrob, that the lipstick is called Full Force and the color is Heartthrob. I have this color probably a hundred times over. I can't tell you, I have the same lipstick color by a bunch of different brands, the same one. At least this one, this is Mover. This is what I'm wearing. I don't have this color. The reason I don't have this color, this video is probably the one and only time I will wear this color. I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I like the Buxom lip glosses, I do. And I think maybe that's why I felt the need to try these lipsticks. And if I was in the market for a lipstick, it might have been a really good deal because I would save money and I would have two lipsticks. But if you're someone like me that has a ton of lipsticks that I'm already not wearing in the exact same color, this is definitely, definitely buyer's remorse. So there you have it. Products I bought, I certainly didn't need. The good thing is, it's a short list. But add it up, and then add up these two things that I don't like, and it's a waste, right? It's a waste, and there's not one, <laughs> the lipstick tumbled under the bed, so I'll have to find that. There's not one of those things that I would have purchased if it wasn't for 21 Days of Beauty. I wasn't saying, oh, I really wanna buy some Ofra lipstick, you know, or, or some Buxom lipstick. I definitely wasn't in the market for it. So that's what I'm saying. So in those cases, all of that for me was a waste. I got caught up in it and I ended up spending money that I really didn't need to spend. So there you have it. Now I'm gonna move into the best products that I got. All of these products were either, were all of them were things I didn't wanna try. I have one thing, I'll start off with that. I have one thing that I never heard of and I decided to try it. And I'm really still not sure about this. So maybe this should also be its own category. But what this is, I'll tell you, it is the Dewy Eyed Illuminating Eye Serum Beekman. Is that the name of it? It comes with this little pouch. Yeah. <laughs> Beekman. Okay. Um, so basically this product is like made from goat milk. I didn't know that when I ordered it, but when I got it, it came with like this little thing, this little booklet, and it was like talking about how milkmaids used to bathe their faces in milk and it gave them great skin and 
you know, there's something to be said for using goat milk, goat's milk. They make a lot of lotion today with goat's milk and it usually is pretty good. So there might be something to that. Now this is supposed to give you like dewy um, under eyes and um, help your puffiness and like dark circles. I can't say I felt like it did that. I can't say I did. However, I did feel like it was very, very soothing. And in, so for somebody like me, I have a terrible allergy. As you probably know, I have a nickel allergy. It does cause me a lot of, um, when I do get reactive skin, it usually is around the eyes. And I am just curious if this is something, I just made a video about skin products to use when you have um, a reaction. And one of the products that is very difficult to find is something that you can use under the eyes because it's a very sensitive area. And um, these, re when you get these kind of rashes, they're very uncomfortable. So I am wondering if this is something else that would be good for that. Like the products, they're very natural products and it was soothing. It's a very soothing um, serum. So I'm wondering if that is in, w could work for me. So I'm gonna hold on to this. It didn't really do anything for my puffiness, but the next time I get a reaction, I know it will happen. I'm gonna try this and see how it works, if it soothes it. And if it does, then this could be a really good find for me. So this one is still kind of on the fence, but is better than some of the other things. Okay, so now the good part. Now comes the part of the products that I purchased that I wanted to try, and for the, I did actually like them all a lot. And I got a deal on them. So out of all of the products, these are the ones that worked for me. The first one, is the Glass Skin Refining Serum by Peach and Lily. Now, I have been wanting to try this for so long. I can't even tell you how long I've been wanting to try this product. I finally got it. I saw that it was on sale. So for me, this was a win. And yes, I do like it. I think it's really, really nice. You use it, you can use it in the morning, you can use it at evening. I use it in the morning under my makeup or even if I'm not gonna wear makeup and it just gives you a, a a dewy skin effect. I'm very into dewy skin. If you like that look, I think you will like this. I actually enjoy all the products from Peach and Lily. Now, I do have a dupe here. It's not exactly the same thing, but if I could redo this, I probably just would have bought this one because I don't need two things that do the same thing, even though they're both nice products. So this other one that I picked up is the Glow Starter. The Glam Glow, Glow, Glow Starter, and it's, Illuminating moisturizer. It's basically the same thing except this one's a serum and this one's a moisturizer But they're basically give you that illuminated look dewy look um, This product though is also very nice and I did want to try it. So what the hell at least I did want to buy it I purchased it and It is nice. It's a nice product. It is I can't say anything bad about it so far I've been liking it. It's very moisturizing which is good for me um, it's hard for me to find face creams that really moisturize. So I felt that it worked well. So yeah, I have kind of two of the same thing, but so what? They're both good. Okay. So now I have a couple more wins here. For a long time, I have been wanting to try the MAC Paint Pots as a primer, like an eye primer. So the MAC Paint Pots, they're actually um, eyeshadows, right? They're not themselves primers, but you use them as a primer. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's how it works. And yeah, because there's really no color, <laughs> no color to them. They can't, so you just use it as a primer for eyeshadow. And the problem with me is that if I, it's not that I have oily eyelids, I don't, but I do, they, like m eyeshadow tends to crease on me without a primer but it has to be a primer that's good for dry skin. A lot of them aren't. The Urban Decay Aging one, Urban Decay makes a primer um, for like, I think it's called anti-aging, and that one is very good for dry skin. This one though, it's also good. And then I was using, the one that's not good is the Anastasia one. That primer for dry skin is not good. I was using another one by ColourPop, that one was also very good, but it wasn't a primer either. It was kind of like this, and I don't think they make it anymore. It was from the Wild Nothing collection. So yeah, this one is good. This is in the shade um, A51. I don't know, Painterly, is that the shade? <laughs> Pro Longwear Paint, Paint Pot, but actually I really did like this. I really did like this. So then the other thing that I wanted to try was 
the Grande Drama Intense Thickening Mascara with Castor Oil. I've wanted to try this for a long time. Um, and I thought it was pretty good. It wasn't the best mascara I ever tried, but it was not the worst. I usually like the wand like that. Um, I did try a great mascara the other day, which was the Smashbox one, the Super Fan. Nobody talks about it. I got it as a sample and I tried it and it was really, really good. This one was good too though. I usually like most mascaras. There's a few I don't like, but for the most part, I'm usually happy with the mascara. And this was okay. Would I run out and buy this again? Do I think it was so much better than other mascaras that I've used? No. But it wasn't a loss because I will use it. Fine. Oh, no. There's one more thing. Okay. I know I like the Too Faced Lip Injections. I do. I think they are the best lip plumping gloss on the market. And I did not have one in color. The ones that I have are like the clear glosses. I didn't have one with an actual shade. So when I saw that they were on sale, I did pick it up. And this is in Soulmate. I think this is really pretty. And it it's the same thing. It's the plumping lip gloss, only it has a shade. So it's not the um, maximum one, though. I think it's, just, it's just the regular one. But it's still really nice. And the big winner here... You guys know I like a palette. Was the Lorac Pro Palette. This is in Noor. Noor? Am I saying that? I don't know if I'm saying that right. But this is so pretty. So for a long time. Oh, you know what's kind of funny? <laughs> Not haha -ha funny, but the ABH. I just did that video with ABH Norvina Palette. And it was actually part of the 21 Days of Beauty. It was on sale. <laughs> I didn't like it, by the way. I did not like that palette. But this palette is beautiful and I have been wanting to try Lorax formula for so long. I know it's not popular, like a lot of people don't talk about it anymore, but I never tried it. So when I did see this palette on sale, I decided to pick it up. Um, I think both of them were on sale. There's, there was a warmer one, but of course I opted for the cool tone. The pan sizes are a little small, but that's not really a big deal to me and it has no shades. It has no, like no um, shade names, but. I'll swatch a few shades. It's so, oh, that color is so, so pretty. It's mostly shimmers. So, like, really nice. I'll swatch some of the mattes. If you like shimmers and you like cool tones, I think I would pick this up. Like, it's really nice. I'll Maybe I'll do a video with it. Why not? That didn't swatch that good. You know I'm not the world's best swatcher, but... Those are like two of the mattes. So they swatch pretty good. I thought this was beautiful. I thought this was a great buy. I really did. I was really impressed with this little palette. I have to tell you. This was my favorite thing that I got in 21 Days of Beauty. Out of everything that I got, this was my favorite. Followed probably by the Peach and Lily. The, I mean, the Too Faced, I knew I was going to like that. I, all those things I just showed you. They were well worth the money, but I knew they would be because they were all products that I either liked or I knew I thought I would like that I wanted to try. The products that I'd never heard of, I think it was a loss. Every single one of them was a loss. So what do you guys think? Do you guys partake in 21 Days of Beauty? Do you usually like what you get? Do you only buy things that you know or do you think it's a good time to discover new products? And if you do, how do you do with those new products? Do they work for you or... Is it usually a loss? I would love to know all your thoughts. Leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, I hope you, and if you found it helpful, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel because we talk about all in the attic. If there's ever anything you want me to talk about, you can also leave that in the comments. You can follow me on my socials. You can come visit me at Kimmy Teresa over on Instagram. If it's something that I can talk about, I absolutely will. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. And as always, take care of yourself so you can take care of someone else. See you next time. Bye.